Welcome to our first virtual lesson, Coral Anatomy. Um, my name is Jessica. I'm a marine science educator here at Melt Marine Laboratory in the Florida Keys. We're so excited to be bringing this to you today, and we're also going to be posting up behind the scenes videos of our labs and sim activities to go along with this lesson on our Google Classroom. So if you found us through the Facebook page, you can sign up at classroom.google.com and you can use the class code you see on the screen now. If you're having any issues with that, please reach out to me at keyseducation at moat.org. Um, with that being said, I'm super, super excited to be bringing this to you today and let's get started. Some materials you might want with you today while we go through this lesson, uh, a pencil, a notebook if you want to take notes, or just simply watch and enjoy, that's totally fine. We also uploaded a coral anatomy worksheet to our Google Classroom, so you could print that out or you could just um, download the Word file to your computer and fill in the blanks, whichever way you'd like to do it, uh, or again, you don't have to do anything at all. You can just enjoy the presentation. Let's quickly go over our learning objectives for the day. At the end of this presentation, we hope you gain a basic understanding of corals and their anatomy, understand the relationship between coral and zooxanthellae, and finally be able to identify the parts of coral and their functions. So let's dive in. Do you think a coral is a rock, plant, or animal? If you guess animal, you're right. Although corals can look like plants or rocks, they are actually animals that live, breathe, and grow. Corals are a part of a group of animals called invertebrates, which means they don't have a backbone. When you see a close-up of a coral, you might think it looks like a jellyfish upside down. And that's because they're closely related. You can think of them as cousins. Corals are colonial animals. Here we're looking at a staghorn coral. And if we zoom in, we can see that this larger piece of coral is actually made up of many smaller pieces called polyps. If we zoom in even more, we can see a single individual coral polyp. Most corals are made up of hundreds of thousands of individual polyps like this one. Each coral polyp is an animal on its own, but to survive, they work like one big organism. The coral skeleton holds this colony together. Corals are able to build and grow their skeletons. They do this by lifting out of the coral light and depositing calcium carbonate or limestone in the space below. Corals take in seawater, which has calcium and a form of carbon called bicarbonate, into their tissues. From there, a special chemical reaction takes place to form calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is a chalky compound corals use to build their skeletons. If you've ever felt an antacid like Tums, that kind of white chalky material, that's actually the same chemical compound as a coral skeleton. Every coral has a cup-shaped skeleton, which you can see in the picture is called the corallite. An individual coral's body, called the polyp, sits on top of the corallite while it's alive, and then after it dies, its skeleton adds to the structure of the coral reef. You can see in the picture that a polyp is made up mostly of a stomach with a mouth on top. Its mouth is surrounded by tentacles, which makes it look like an upside-down jellyfish, and inside these tentacles are stinging cells, which corals can use to stun their prey and then pull the food into their mouth using tentacles like fingers. Corals can eat things like microscopic plankton and tiny fish. Within their tissues at the top, we can see two things, nematocyst and zooxanthellae. Remember how we said corals are really closely related to jellyfish? Corals and jellyfish belong to a group called cnidaria, which gets its name from the Greek word nidos. This means stinging nettle. All organisms in this group have one thing in common, nematocysts. Nematocysts can deliver powerful, often deadly toxins used to capture their prey. Let's take a look at how this works. In the first picture, you can see a capsule, and within that capsule is a barb and a thread coiled under a lot of pressure. The barb inside acts like a harpoon. When a fish or plankton swims by and touches the tentacles of the polyp, 
That flap you see on top, called the operculum, is triggered to flap open, and the coil inside springs into action, shooting the harpoon out of the capsule. When it hits its target, it will release a toxin which produces the stinging sensation. This stinging sensation can be strong enough to stun or kill the prey. The tentacles can then pull the prey into their mouths, and the nematocysts go back into their capsules. Corals get about 10% of their energy from capturing their food this way. That doesn't seem like that much, so how do they get the rest of their energy? Zozenthelli. That's a weird word. You can see here a picture of a few individual coral polyps. You can see the tentacles actually look clear, and they have these brownish parts inside of them. These brownish parts are the zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae are a type of algae, which is similar to a plant, and they have a mutualistic relationship with the coral. Zooxanthellae can photosynthesize, which means they can create energy or food using light from the sun. Corals get 90% of their food from their zooxanthellae. That energy is then transferred to the host coral tissue. Let's investigate this further. Corals have a mutualistic relationship, or another word for this would be a symbiotic relationship, with their zooxanthellae. Basically what this means is that both organisms are getting something from the other. Corals breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide and other waste products that we can see on this diagram. Zooxanthellae are able to use carbon dioxide, which is unusable by the coral, and take in light to photosynthesize. Zooxanthellae are able to create sugars and lipids or fats from this photosynthesis, which they are then able to share with the coral and give the coral 90% of their energy. So to wrap up what we've learned, we learned that corals are animals. They are invertebrates and closely related to jellyfish. They have a hard skeleton, tentacles, and stinging cells that help them to live, breathe, and grow and they have a symbiotic relationship with the algae living in their tissues. They get 90% of their energy from this zooxanthellae, the symbiotic relationship. Coming up tomorrow, we're gonna to be going behind the scenes in our Keys Coral Lab. One of our science technicians, Cody, is going to be putting some coral polyps under the microscope so we can see them up close. And if you haven't already, and you wanna stay up to date with the materials that we're putting out, Go ahead and sign up on our Google Classroom using the code that you see here. We will be posting our, all of our content, our lessons, our STEM activities, our behind the scenes videos, and also our Q and A's with our scientists here. Uh, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. Uh, follow our Facebook page, Protect Our Reefs, and we hope to see you again soon.